Welcome to match three of League Five, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start the show. See if we can nip this in the button under an hour. Yeah, We're on a roll. Good grief. No Jace. That's the that's the beauty. Uh, that is the key. Because those are the matchups that uh, go horribly awry. <laughs> At least so far. The whopping what? Two, maybe three that have faced that had Jace. The two that I've seen yeah. were horrendous. Yep. He's got to learn to give up as soon as they fade Celia. <laughs> All right. So, oh, my God. Ooh. Uh, four, five lands? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's EU. quite the easy. Uh, the man lands make it a little more tempting, but if they have any uh, sort of removal, these are bad, and I can't spit my ham hand out. Being on that... the draw... I'm going to mulligan. This, while only having one land, uh, has access still to better. two sources. Yeah, still significantly better. So I'm going to keep. And there we go. I'm going to actually, yeah, keep that on top. I don't think the man lands and a five lander should ever be the thing that convinces you to keep it. No. I just think that five lands is far too many to ever keep. Yeah, for if, I mean, what, we've had hands four land hands on here that were uh i honestly really think bad. most three land hands are bad uh three depending on what the rest of it is i think is somewhat acceptable Ooh. yeah normal renegade huh Re renegade zoo they're going to kill you fast so you best kill them faster yeah, no kidding um I guess it's probably better to start with the Scourge than to get some lifelink back. Yep. One might argue the drum is better. Mm, if they get the nut nuts, you'll be seeing Burning Tramissary into whatever dude that gives them mana. It's just a bunch of two drops that create two mana when they come into play, so they can just keep playing more of them. Yep. If you've ever played against this deck. Um, uh, I think I might have casually once. And I might have played against it in paper. Ah, uh, yeah. Bolt is... I was afraid of Bolt. Eh, you didn't play on the creature. <clears throat> and the Bolt hit that. And you have a backup. You're fine. Yeah. Well, Maybe play some Nekatol. Maybe play another one. Yeah. Nekatol. The Cobble. 3-3. Three, three. Not so good news for us. Another two drop is, or another plating is also not good news. Um, so I can either play just the Scourge and only take one life, or I play Scourge and Drum. Playing Scourge and Drum feeds into being able to play multiple things next turn. Uh, it sucks, but I think it's better that way. Yep, I like that. It would have been the argument for playing drum last turn, but then the bolt would have either gone to my face or it just bolts one of these anyway. So they have four cards in hand. So let's see what's going to do well in this matchup. Another Galvanic Blast. Maybe Whip Flares. Ugh, darn Cheapest. Yeah, that's what we were hoping to not happen. Oh, what do we want our draws to be? The Vault Scourge. Mm. The Vault Scourge would hurt quite a bit right now. <laughs> Memnite would be awesome to have drawn if one of these was etched champion. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is not the case, and we are stuck with simply playing a Ravager and crying on the inside and passing. Um, Blood Moon might be pretty good. I'm not sure... Potentially. How but Whip I... Flare is... Whip Flare's not going to be worth it. Yeah, they're dudes. They're likely coming out. Yeah, they're almost always going to have a 3-butt. Mm -hmm. Alright. 
so I can save some life by chumping with Memnite. And chump and eating chump it. and eat it. I could oh this guy's got death touch. That he does. So what could we do here? Chump and eat it. Yeah, and just take two. Alternatively, yeah. I sink a whole bunch of mana into this block. Or sorry, not mana, dudes. Block and uh modular onto the Nexus, but I don't think that gets me far enough ahead. No. I'd say just chump and eat. Yeah. Take the two. I hope that I live to die another day. Gonna die another day. James Bond style. Declare blocker step. Cast instance and activate stuff. Well, I'm gonna sacrifice an artifact and feel a little bit better about it. What are we hoping for now? As champion would still be good. Overseer, less so. If I can survive, it's decent. But that means I'm not blocking next turn, and that hurts real bad. But I'm certainly yeah, not playing one of the these double, meetings. The double bolt was just... Yeah. Ugh. That was... I mean, do you just play Overseer? Probably play Overseer and eat it. Double eat. Yeah. Maybe have him block the block Death Toucher, block, block there. there with the Ravager, double eat, and then the Nakatl's down. Yeah. What the hell is in their hand? Probably. <sighs> this one might be a bigger version and is maybe doing Blood Braid, so it has some three drops in it. Oh, sure. Getting some craziness with that. Trying out the new but, hotness. But typically this deck just runs the bunch of two drop dudes and then tries to get the Nutter Butters and hit it into uh, the Goblin Bushwhacker to pump the whole team. Mm -hmm. Bushwhacker, you need three to do the whole thing, right? No, it's it's two mana because of Surge. Oh, okay. Steel Overseer in front of the Renegade. Yep, and then Arc Run Ravager in front of the Nakatl. Hoping that they don't have some sort of kill the Ravager thing. Um, so let's see, we'll eat. Eat the Overseer. Or hold on. And then, I, yeah, I was going to say, tap one of your dudes. Just have some I mean, there. I would have said, oh, no, the Overseer is 76, so never mind. Yeah, so we're going to go all in on this here Ravager. Probably has some bolt or something. Eat the drum. And then we've got a 4-4, four, four, which won't block the 2-3. Um, ugh. I guess I probably have to activate Blink Moth now. It really exposes me, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I have to do it. Otherwise, I cannot modular onto it. Worst come worst case scenario. But you could be right. He could be just stuck on some bigger stuff in hand, which it looks like that is the case. So weird. Yeah. All right. So we're going to play past to jump block and get in with the Ravager. I mean, I guess. Um, maybe I attack first. Because what else? Oh, do they have hasty stuff? I guess if they have the... Pretty sure they have... Whacker. Pretty sure they have Goblin Guide. Goblin Guide. Like, this is, like, this is just supposed to be a low-to-the-ground deck. Why the hell he has five cards in his hand? I don't know. Ugh. Are we scared enough to not attack? I'm pretty sure we attack. I'm pretty sure the line is attack with Ravager, play, play past. Play past, pass. Like we're we're riding this Ravager. Yeah, if we're not attacking, we're dying. So. Because you're not gonna chump the Renegade Rallyer. No. What I need is some more low to the ground stuff. 
I guess if I can keep if I can keep drawing one drops or zero drops. I mean, you chump and eat it. Yeah, to chump, to just keep chumping. Oh boy, probably bad news. Down to seven. Yeah, this is... Whatever they're doing now is kind of what I was... Oh. Okay. <laughs> not afraid of that. Well, not afraid of it. But they Yeah, here comes the bushwhacker. You think so? It does, is, it only, is it only two for the bushwhacker? I'm to surge it. Terrible. There it is. Okay, so... Gives all creatures you control plus one plus zero in haste. Yeah, that's what we were afraid of, which is why I might have wanted to leave Ravager back. But if you're playing if you're playing Affinity and you're playing with fear, then I don't know. You're losing already. Something. Doesn't buff we're himself not, though. That is good news. Uh we're also not dead because nope. of signal pest. Is he just cracking sideways? He might not. Okay, yeah, because then that is, yeah, that's a lot smarter. Because then I'm just losing my guy, and he has a thing to block my attack. Well, 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 wait, wait, wait. How much are you taking? Are you taking, like, six? Six. Is there a way we kill him next turn with the... With seven with the Ravager? Um, if we play a plating and attack with both Pest and Ravager. Ravager's going to be blocked either way. It would have four counters. That'd be four damage with Pest, five if we eat the plating. What if, if we just attack with the Blink Moth just the and Blink the Ravager? Moth. No, attack with all of them, you know. Uh, this pumps this up to two. two. Sack this to the Ravager. Ravager goes to five. Four. Sack that, put him on that, and then that's seven. Uh, confirm my confirm my math. You've got Blink Moth, one, two. Then you have four going from Ravager to Pest. That's only six. No, 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 no. Sack the Pest to the Ravager, then sack the Ravager to hit the Blink Moth, which oh, then makes it... Right, okay. Seven. One, two, four, five. Yeah, that's seven. That's That's it. I just take this. Excellent. Good thing you saw that. Yeah, we keep that back, and uh, because he already played a land this turn, we win. Nice spot. Huzzah. And that's if we don't even get a zero drop. Zero drop just cements it in. I mean, land, whatever. It's the same difference. So play that. Tap for mana to activate that. Main phase, beginning of combat, all in. Mm -hmm. He's going to block Ravager. Declare attacker step. Yeah. I'm always so nervous at these critical junctions because what if I like <laughs> hit OK or miss something? Um, so I'm just going to activate Nexus for funsies and eat that instead of pest. Because mm -hmm. why not? Sacrifice an artifact. That will be five counters, and we will have gotten that exactly. Wow. So glad that you saw that line. And screw it. We're just going to sacrifice itself. Well played, sir. <laughs> Yes, use its ability. Okay. Good job, opponent, on making me actually do this, because there is the chance that I misclick, and that'd be the game. Thank you kindly. Alrighty. Um, etched has to be good. Mm -hmm. Blast has to be good. 
Rest in peace, we don't care. Bitter Blossom, don't care. Grudges? I don't know if I'm playing any artifacts. No. Blood Moons seem pretty decent to me. Uh, yes and no. You can start boarding the way you want. I need to double check the list. Sure, they could have I got basics that he just didn't see. I gotta think. No, it's it's a lot of shock lands. Um, We're on the draw, gotta... so Blood Moon's gonna slow us down a bit. So I think at most we put in one. Um, alternatively, or looking at other cards, keeping Blood Moon under consideration, but not necessarily forcing it. Uh, Welding Jar is good. I think keeping the Memnites is good. Bomat Courier, I don't like. I'm, I actually might just get rid of that other Courier, put in another Galvanic Blast. I've taken them out more than they've been useful. Uh, so I still need to take out two cards if we're keeping these three. I definitely like Etched, because it can block for days. Blast is also good to get rid of their dudes. Um... Overseer, I think, is a mite too slow against this deck. So potentially it could be cutting another Overseer, or we cut the Blood Moon. What did your online research reveal? Yeah, a lot of dorks like I thought. Yep. Like um, Experiment 1, Goblin Guide, Curd Ape, Nanum Renegade, Wild Nekatal, Burning Tree Emissary, Termogoyf, Voltaic Brawler, Reckless Bushwhacker. They do only run about 19 lands. What's their basic uh, to non-basic look like? There's only two basics in this deck. Okay. I think I like Blood Moon over one Overseer then. Mm-hmm. And again, this list is from a while ago. Yeah, so that might be a problem. Also, yeah. a pro might be a problem is we have lots of three drops. Uh, but we'll roll with it. We're one game up. Let's see what sort of rampy hand I can not get. Looks like some of them have been also trying to incorporate Collected Company. He, that could have been his hand. Oh, sure, if he had Coco. Wait, wanting that fourth <laughs> land. Um, this hand is extremely dependent upon getting a second and even third mana source. Uh, being on the draw, we have 16, 20, 24 cards that get us that second source of mana. Um, well, I mean, you can play Memnite Thopter Signal Pest, right? Right, yeah. We have plays. Yeah. I'm going to give it a keep. It might be a bit risky. Goblin guide. Nothing. They shocked. They must want. He must have a bolt that he wants. Ugh. Etched bolt or a path. Weed. Yeah, etched we didn't really want to see. Dump your hand. Maybe path, he'll. Path, I wouldn't mind. Path, your signal best. Pathing would be glorious. And the opponent wouldn't even know it. I think it's more likely they have Bolt. Something we didn't keep into consideration. Ah, oh, yes. Bolt me. All right, then. They must have a ground creature that they want to play next turn, which would thus block Memnite. The new Jonathan. Yep. All right, well, Blood Moon just got less good. Uh, yep, Emissary. So that's that ground creature we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Let's see how. Mm-hmm. Yep, there's that. For an aggressive start. Um I would assume he just swings in with the emissary. Both. Do I want to offer the trade with Memnite? <laughs> this is a race. His five damage versus my Whopping three damage. But if I block now, 
it prevents that two damage quite a bit in the future. This might be an aggressive block, but I'm going to do it. Because I won't be able to do it in the future. Second mana source is awesome. Ravagers, okay. Um, get in for one or have the chump blockers. I think I like the blockers a little bit more than a whopping one damage. Next turn <laughs> is a different story. If we can land a third mana source, preferably a I guess I don't care if it's colored mana source or not. Um, etched might be a little bit better than Master as a first play, though it is a huge creature. Well, relatively speaking. Curd Ape. Yeah, if he plays Tormgo, I feel it'll be a 4 or 5. No attacks. Wanting to hold back on the Ravager, I assume. Plating is... I mean, it's our only play. So mm -hmm. we play it, and we pass. I think passing is still right. I yeah, I imagine they have... I imagine they have revelries, so... Yeah, we'll pass. We're going to not do it in a stupid way, though. It's okay if I hit okay and one a couple extra times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now we're on the end step and they might have some sort of removal spell. Or not. Three cards in hand. Ravager could potentially get up to a one, two, three, four... That's if I eat my board, though, and that's kind of risky. Revelry is what? Red-green? Uh-huh. All right, opponent. You probably have some sort of tricks. It's only four damage. I think I take it. Because my crackback yeah. is significantly more scary. Tarka's command. Yeah, that'd be four, five, six, nine. Nine. Still survive. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I I think that was still. I probably should have thought of that, but I still think holding my guys back is better. Oh dear. Okay. That is scary. Ugh. That <laughs> is definitely not what we wanted to see. Um, but at this at this point, five zero cards in hand, so they are top decking. Um if I don't block all of their creatures, I go down to three and then am within bolt range, which is very bad. However, if I do that, that leaves them with two creatures left and I probably get Ravager somewhere to kill something. Alternatively, I attack for one, two, three, four, five with Ornithopter, putting them on a three turn clock. I'm going to push the clock, and hope they don't get something crazy like another Atarker's Command. But we will leave back the Pest of Signals. Really what we wanted there was another mana source so that we could land etched and start putting up a wall there. 
Yep, forgot about that flying part. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just want to turn? Hmm. Oh yeah. I was gonna say turn on the blink turn moth, but, moth, but it doesn't. But it, it doesn't, doesn't increase my clock. Does not. Um, and might come in handy if he kills Ravager somehow to modular onto it, or give Ravager more fuel. Beginning of combat. Yeah, all in. So, might have some sort of combat trick. Uh, I probably want to get Thalia dead, so block Emissary and Curdape. Or, sorry, Emissary and Thalia. Because I can't yep. not block. Well, not blocking would not be ideal. Yeah, okay. So, one second here. Do we have another out like we did last game? No. Probably it's not as close cuz a full out attack next turn would be 5 6 7 8 uh 9 10. So we could attack for 10, but we can't not block. So mm -hmm. we're losing past. So maybe attacking with past last turn would have been better because then we could have chumped with ornithopter. Oh well, it's a bit late for that now. I don't think taking four is a good idea. Taking two is just as deadly as taking four, though. Yeah, and how are you going to kill the Thalia at his first strike? Uh, if I get Ravager bigger, I'd have to eat more things. Yeah, I know. Without eating more things, it's really not going to work. Yeah. Um, cancel that. So... Uh, So instead... Blocking I, one with signal pest. Do we get... Are we better off if I block with Ravager and sack it to itself? Because then we get one counter. Then we've got five, six, seven damage, which is still not enough. Uh, eight if we play plating. Still not enough. Alternatively... If I block Burning Tree, like whatever, which whatever I block is relevant. Then we've got a 2-2 Ravager and a 4-2 Ornithopter, which is still only 6. I don't think we have a way out of here. But going to 1 is no more dangerous than going to 2 with, mm -hmm. uh, with Bolt in mind. So I think I just block here and uh, eat it. I don't think we have any outs. Even if I get a mana source. That means I have to not block next turn. Oh, first strike damage. <laughs> Read that wrong. I was very confused as to why we were only at three. Bolt me, probably. No, another Curd Ape. Which is still bad, and we have another Ravager. We have three blockers. They have four attackers. That's game. Um, let's see. On the play, how much can I lock him out with a Blood Moon? If he has a basic, not much. And it's probably better to have creatures in this matchup than to mm -hmm. have Blood Moons. Turn three, they'll already have creatures on the board. Yeah. And they'll probably already have the mana they need. So maybe Blood Moon is bad in general. This deck is probably too aggressive. Which means I want another creature, which is going to be either Overseer or Courier. If it's Courier, courier it's easier to get out and swinging. However, Steel Overseer, if we are able to protect it, can get crazy.
I think I'm going to give Courier a try. It's likely just going to be fodder, but it's another quick play, uh-huh. which I'm pretty sure I need. Yes, play first, and I do need to keep in mind the time. Uh, this hand doesn't get Mox Opal off very quickly, but I can Spire right away, and I can Blast their... Th- mm. I think I keep it. I like it. Because it has answers, which we haven't had yet. Six. Okay. If it goes again, that's kind of good. All right. Well, that's fine. I mean, it's no different than when we mulliganed. All right. Um, Card on the bottom. Yeah, okay. That's good. I'm going to Spire, and I'm going to Opal, and I'm going to... Scourge. Yeah. Because early life gain, if possible, is great. And if Scourge survives, we can get a pest and have Metalcraft for G Blast. not our fastest hand uh it doesn't have an end game plan but it does hopefully have a take care of their early game plan all right in this case a one two death touch is as scary as a two three death touch Uh uh-huh another pest all right well pretty sure we're okay with that also turns on Opal, which I will not blast anything until next turn. Because that's when their bigger stuff is probably going to come down. Beginning of combat, yep. Swing with the Scourge to gain back one of those lives I paid. Two Pests plus Scourge... Seems like it would have some decent potential. Seems like it'll get there. Yeah, unless they have red. Yeah, it's a little clunky, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. I assume he's talking about MTGO. I agree that it is a little clunky. There is a red source, which is not good news for us. But we have two Galvanic Blasts, which is not good news for him. He already shocked himself. <clears throat> the zoo decks are very liberal with their life total. Yeah, which is bad when they're facing another... And a card ape. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't play another threat, I'm tempted to go bla- to blast his face and step. Because he played... He played his threat pre-combat. I mean, if you want to, I mean, it's kind of best to do it when you know you have them. Yeah, which I don't. Next turn, I'm attacking for three, four, five. I mean, uh, you could activate the Blink Moth yeah, and hit them six, seven, for eight. eight. Which means they'd be at four, or sorry, hit for four, they're at 11. Hit for eight, they're at three, which means Give it a go. the next turn kills them. The question is whether or not they're able to kill me next turn. You're at 18. They kill you. Not. Yeah, I'm also going to be gaining three life. Oh, yeah. This is totally worth it. It's just very just telling when you just do that to their face. They're like, oh, God. <laughs> this is a seriously terrible hand. Oh, no. Opponent. Why you keep the bad hand? Oh, yeah, this is even better. So now we can just activate Blink Moth like we were planning anyway. Oh, wait, I'm going to do this intelligently. 
Tap this for mana. Activate. Main phase. Beginning of combat. Attack with all. And then, unless they have an answer for a creature, they are dead. Six, seven, eight. That panned out wonderfully. That top deck signal pest was actually much better than I thought it would be. <laughs> Alright. So that was a great third round. Um, so that puts us at Zoo. Another one for the books. Thanks for watching.